Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. All right. There we go. So let's recap of what we've been talking about. Started out with telling you, or helping you, figuring out what's holding you back from Christ, mm -hmm. what your problems are, what you got to do to fix those problems. So now we're getting into the following weeks, maybe a month or so, is um, we're working on spiritual warfare. How to fight your battles. Yes. Mm, come on. Do what is a part of you. Because you, you have a part. God has a part, you have a part. So I got a few things I'm going to read. I didn't write them, so I can read them. And <laughs> so first off, let's kick off the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. If you haven't read Ephesians, that's probably one of the best written things that Paul ever did. It literally has circumference everything that you should be doing, starting out from the first to the end of that chapter. That's an amazing book to read. So, all right, the whole armor of God. All right, this is pretty close to the end that he was writing this letter to the Ephesians. It says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm. Stand firm against all strategies, all schemes of the devil. But we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Right. All right. You know, the enemies that we are fighting, but there are evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world uh -huh. against mighty powers in the dark, in this dark world, against evil spirits and in heavenly places. So. What is that saying is, there is a different world. Think of it like The Matrix. You ever watch the movie The Matrix? Man, come on. You know, you know, he was a computer programmer in the earthly realm. And he learned that there was another realm. Just like here, we have our earthly realm. We have our earthly problems. You know, might be cussing, sinning, you know, emotions. You know, drugs, drinking, you know, sexual temptations, whatever it may be. But where does all that come from? It comes from the spiritual realm. Come on. You know. And in this, what we're going to go over is, today is just going to be like an overview. How do we wear the armor of God? How do we apply it in our life? Because God gave it to us. He didn't, he's not dressing us. It's our job to dress ourselves. Come on. So, so, all right. I got one other thing to read. Oh, so we were supposed to stand firm on the darkest of days. What is the darkest of days? What is that darkness? Have, how many of y'all had a dark day or an evil day? It's written in the Bible, the evil day. So, you know, that's where, okay, we have our good days. Yeah, things are going good. We might have a little bad thing. Somebody could stop work, but... The darkest, the evilest of days is, you know, the devil, he, he's a master magician. He, he knows all your flaws to the perfection of where he knows that your evil day might be when you're tired and you're exhausted. Your brain is like just mush. You know, that's how it was with, with me and my ball, of my fight. And I learned how to do this through God. That evil day, it, he knows which buttons to push on the evil day. Right. So, but, so I have some lyrics to one of my favorite bands. It's a Christian band out of Georgia. The band is called Theocracy. The Theocracy is it's a government ruled by God, basically. That's the best way that I can put it. So the, the lyrics of this song is called "Laying the Demon to Rest." So let's read it. Okay, it says, "As I sit alone and tired, with time to spare, temptation rears its ugly head." Born from a deceptive dream into a nightmare. It calls to me again, testing me to see if I will break this time, or at least how far I will bend. I can see its glowing eyes and hear its evil cries. Come dance with me, my friend. So that's how the devil works. You know, he sees her tired and he just throws this little thought in her head. Oh, here it is right there. Yeah, come on. And he's like, hey. Oh, yeah, speaking of the spiritual realm, there are angels. There's fallen angels. When the devil fell, what, a third of the angels right. fell with him, right? Yeah. So, 
So as we're standing here in this church, there's angels in this church. But there's evil angels in this church too. They don't care if you go to church because there's a partition. As long as the devil, you go to church and you're on the God side of the partition or under the umbrella of the rain. Say all this evil rain is falling around you. And then there's the dark side of it too. You don't care if you go to church as long as you jump out every once in a while and get in that dark rain. You know? He's still got you under his control. You know? Sorry, I, just, I don't know, I was just chuckling about this. But, you know, what is the one thing that gives you the most difficulty in life? You know, in this worldly realm, you can't solve worldly problems with worldly answers. Mm. When the devil says, hey, I want you to take this bump of coke, you know, he's just going to keep pushing it. You can't solve that. Yeah, okay. Step programs. 12-step programs, A, those are all good things. They have their purposes, yeah. but they aren't the final answer. Come on. You know, I've been to a 12-step program. My problem was with sexual addiction. I've never shared my testimony with you, but God, this is, it's going to tell me now. I guess I should share it. So let's do this. So, <laughs> all right. Bear with me, man. <laughs> I love you. So, all right. So from the age of six, I was sexually molested by my cousin. No one cares. Okay. My mom was looking at me. I know who it was. Oh, I know you know, and y'all didn't believe me when I told y'all either. It's okay, keep on being. So, but anyways, that is the past. Wait, yes, it is. You know, it helped me become the man I am today. Yes. Without yes. that, I wouldn't change my past. So, anyways, I was sexually molested from the age of six. I go to my neighbor's house also. They had a stack of pornos as tall as I was. I was six years old. I was two years younger than my son. You know, that sin has fought me my whole life. It has controlled me because all sins are equal, but that sin is the most easily accessible. Back in those days, you had to buy smut mags, you know, or whatever. They didn't have, you had to rent the tapes, buy smut mags, whatever. And that's how we watched it back then, you know. But now with the age of the internet, starting in the 90s, you know, Kilobytes, 16 kilobytes a second internet, you're able to watch full porn without that. Like, with no issues. So, But learning how to put on the full armor of God got me through this. Yes, sir. So, and in the following weeks, it's, God's telling me I need to show you how to do this. As I said, the 12-step programs, I went to SA, Sexaholics Anonymous, 12-step program. You know, I was listening to uh, um, Tony Evans the other day. That's one of my favorite online pastors. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that man can preach. He puts me in tears. <laughs> but he mentioned the other day when I was listening online was, by time step two, if you haven't realized that God is the answer, then you haven't, you can still go through the 12 steps, but you will never be healed. You know? All right. Luckily, I learned in step one, I went and did my hour-long meeting with the guy. It was in Yorktown. There's only one essay person around, and it's in Yorktown. And God told me, this is a good start, but that's not the path. You know, Twelve-step programs are amazing if you have God in your life. But twelve-step programs are a band-aid if you don't have God in your life. So, and what I'm trying to tell you today what God is trying to tell me through you is if you can't fully believe about the spiritual realm and know that it exists and that all these devils and demons, fallen angels are around you fighting you, then you can work with the book. You can carry it around like a lucky rabbit's foot. That ain't going to do nothing. Come on. You know? You can read from the book and get it, the message from it, and start learning from it. You know, that's what, uh, I can't remember the Greek name. Logos. 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 Yeah. So, but learning how to use the the sword oh, yeah. in the right. future. You know, because there's three. There's six total pieces. The first three, you actually well, let's read through them quick. The first three, you're required to wear them all the time. You know. So. All right, so therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil, the darkest day. Then after the battle, 
you will be standing firm. Stand your ground. Putting, put on the belt of truth. Put on the body armor of God, or the breastplate of the might, plate of righteousness. Put on or shod your shoes with peace that come from the good news. Those three, we're just doing the general over overview. You need to wear those all the time. When you wake up in the morning and you thank God and you're getting in the book, it's like a wedding ring. You wear that to let people know that you're taken. You wear your personal pieces and let you know that God has taken you. And the following three, it says take up. You'll hear the words, take up, take up, take up. That means you pick up as needed. Come on. And how does it start off? You hold up the shield of faith. Because, you know, you're already wearing these pieces of armor. You don't have your helmet on. You don't have a sword around. It might be within reach, but you don't have your shield. But one thing you're going to run to do when those flames, arrows, flame and arrows start riding towards you, flying towards you. you know, I'm a big war history buff. We're going to get into this really cool. But... You grab that shield first when those flaming arrows come. So yeah, and grab that helmet next. And grab that sword. So. All right, I got one more thing I'm going to read. It's from a Racy Stedman book. This man wrote, this is the first book it was gifted to me. It's by a friend of mine, Donald Clark. And um, when I was going through my battle, after I put a man through basically a living hell with my addiction, you know, but this is an interesting little story. All right, it says, two battleships assigned to the training squadron had been at sea on maneuvers in heavy weather. Like heavy weather means like, these are like six, seven, eight foot, 10 foot swells, you know, this is a storm, like a hurricane. You know, they were in a big storm, you know. This guy says, I was serving on the lead battleship and was on watch on the bridge as night fell. You know, how do they communicate at night? They use these lamps, and they did Morse code. You know, so that's how they did it, you know? <laughs> oh, that's the best way to describe it. You know, the visibility was poor with patchy fog. So that means they couldn't see anything in front of them, but every once in a while. So the captain remained on the bridge, keeping an eye on all activities. You know, the captain was heading the ship like he should. Shortly after dark, the lookout on the wing of the bridge reported light bearing on the starboard bow. So, starboard, I think starboard is right side. So, it is steady. Is it steady or moving astern, the captain asked. Okay, is it steady means it's not moving, or is it moving astern means is it moving away from us. All right, he asked the lookout. Lookout replied, steady, captain, which meant we were on a dangerous collision course with that ship. A captain then called to the single man, signal that ship. We're on a collision course. Advise, you change your course 20 degrees. Back came the signal. Advisable for you to change your course 20 degrees. The captain's like, hmm. All right, he said, all right. He says, I'm the captain. Change course 20 degrees. This is what he's telling the signal man. So you got the relay man. They're signaling back and forth, probably like 1,000 yards apart or 100 yards apart. You know, they're, they're getting close. So came back. In this fog, all he sees is this little bitty light, probably like the size of your ink pen. It says, I'm a seaman class two, which means he's pretty low compared to the captain. <laughs> Came to reply, you had better change your course 20 degrees. And by this time, the captain was just livid. He was just furious. He spat out of his mouth, send, I am a battleship. Change your course 20 degrees or we're going to crash. Back came that little bitty flashing light. It said, I'm a lighthouse. <laughs> Captain said, we need to change course. <laughs> All right, so this is how I'm going to kill it. Take finish this off. So, brother, here I'll here. It says, you know, God's truth is like that lighthouse. We are like that battleship. You know, we're walking around this earth trying to change our worldly problems in this worldly realm with our worldly issues with our worldly answers. Mm. <laughs> Come on. But in our human arrogance, we chart our own course. It's like I said. And demand the world adjust itself around us. Yeah. Yeah. But, if we are truly with God, God's truth is unchanging, unbending, right. and unyielding. God is that lighthouse. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It is not God's duty to alter his truth. It is our responsibility 
to chart our course according to the light of his word. Amen. Which is ultimate, optic reality. If we fail to do so, we risk running aground. Amen. 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 Amen.